In the first problem, we're asked to take the square root of 121. You know that 121 is 11 squared, so the square root is 11. We're asked to take the square root of 64, and you know that 64 is 8 squared, so the square root of 64 is 8. The cubed root of 125 is 5, because you know that 5 cubed equals 125. The cubed root of 64 is 4, because you know that 4 cubed is 64. The fourth root of 81 is 3, because 3 to the fourth equals 81. And the fourth root of 625 is 5, because 5 to the fourth is 625. The fourth root of 16 is 2, because 2 to the fourth is equal to 16. Once we start combining numbers and variables, we kind of want to split them apart. We want to do the numbers first and then the variables second. So I'm going to think of this as being the square root of 36 times the square root of x squared. The square root of 36 we know to be 6, so that's no big deal. The square root of x squared, we might immediately realize what it is. If we don't, we could rewrite it with a rational exponent. We could say this is x to the 2 over 2, because we have that invisible index of 2, which is just x to the first or x. We have the square root of 121 times x to the fourth, so that's the square root of 121 times the square root of x to the fourth. Well, we know that the square root of 121 is 11. When we look at this square root of x to the fourth, that's x to the 4 over 2. Since 4 divided by 2 is 2, this is going to be an x squared. In the next problem, we have the square root of 64 times the square root of d to the 8th. Well, we know that the square root of 64 is 8. For d to the 8th, we call it d to the 8 divided by 2, which we see is d to the 4th. Now, we use this technique of splitting the first and second parts from each other when we had a number and a variable. But we can also create the same situation when we have a number that's not a perfect square. So if we look at 32, we would ask ourselves, what's the biggest perfect square that evenly divides 32? Well, it really helps if we have kind of a list of perfect squares in our head or written right down in front of us. So let's write down our squares. We know 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100. I like to start at the bottom of my list and work my way up. Now, 36 is bigger than 32. So I ask myself, does 25 go into 32? Nope. Does 16 go into 32? Absolutely. So I'm going to rewrite this as the square root of 16 times the square root of 2 because 16 times 2 is 32. Well, the square root of 16 is 4, and I don't know what the square root of 2 is, so that becomes my simplified answer. Let's do the same thing for 27. We want to look for the biggest perfect square that evenly goes into 27. Well, it's not divisible by 25 or by 16, but it is divisible by 9. So this is the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. I can take the square root of 9. I know it's 3. I can't take the square root of 3, so it stays inside. 80 would be way down here. It's not divisible by 64 or 49 or 36 or 25, but it is divisible by 16. So I'm going to rewrite this as the square root of 16 times the square root of 5, because 16 times 5 is 80. I take the square root of 16 because I can. It's 4. I can't take the square root of 5, so it stays inside. 